How's it my brews? Good to see you back. More gasser content for your eye holes today. We left off last time having just welded up the swing arm. Now we need to finish it off. We've got brake mount to go in. We've got the gusset that's got to go in here. We need another little gusset on the bottom. We need to do a cutout for chainstay clearance. And there's a little cover that needs to go on here as well. And then it's alignment. Cable guards need to go on as well. We've got Cindy on the case for that, but they're not ready yet. So yeah, we'll finish that swing arm up in this video. Then we can crack on with the front triangle in the next one. Allow me to interrupt this scheduled broadcast to bring you a word from our sponsors. Oh, hang on, I forgot who it was. Oh yeah, it's me. I haven't actually got any sponsors at the moment. And I haven't got enough views uh, for the channel to be monetized either. So I need your guys' help if you want to see more of this. Because I'm bringing you all these videos out of the kindness of my own heart. You don't have to spend any money. All you have to do is share the hell out of the videos. Try and get me some more views. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Apparently all that kind of stuff helps with the algorithm. Liking it too. Cost you nothing. Just help us out. Help a brother out. If you do want to spend some money, you can all hit up the old website. There's a few things on there that you can buy. Posters, trail tools, EXT, like adjustment tools. Obviously bike frames as well. If you want to see more of these videos, help a brother out. Back to making swing arms. As mentioned in the previous video, we've got a bit of work to do to this before we can fit it into the frame. So, we'll do that first. These wee jobbies here get cut off and then welded into the swing arm in a different position. They're just here because it's easy to have them cut out in one piece for the laser cutting. It's widely known that cracks can form from sharp edges. So I need to sort of deburr all of these edges everywhere on this gusset, even in all these holes and stuff. All around, just take off all those sharp edges. And then we're less likely to have a crack. We use our little belt sander to get to the bits I can do, but I can't get to all of them, so out comes the file. So I've been attacking those nice and good with the file. No sharp edges left. Next thing we need to do now is do the chainstay cutout in the old swing arm. And it's easiest to do that in the fixture because then I can clamp the fixture in the vise in the mill. So I'm going to chuck the swing arm back in the fixture and then move over to the mill. Put it back in the fixture. To put a to put it back in the fixture, I've got to take these bits out. So we can just talk about the welding sequence a bit <clears throat> now before we do that. So yeah, I've been welding insides to outsides. You know, welded these bits first and then the outsides. And the idea is to try and spread these out a bit. Because when we put the gusset in here, it's going to squeeze it back in. Also, if it's too tight, then it's not going to fit in the frame. Whereas if it's a bit wider, you know, that's better than if it's too tight. So, I'm going to go ahead and undo these two bolts, just loosen them up, and if that had squeezed in, I wouldn't be able to twist these, they wouldn't be able to move, as you see that, they spin quite freely, second that one, this one has actually opened up a little bit, it's a bit wider than it needs to be, which is good at this stage, because the, when the gusset goes in, it's going to try and squeeze it in loads, so it's good that it's out there now. The main pivot is, you know, it's not wobbly, it's pretty much bang, bang on, which is good because that doesn't really move when the gusset goes in. So before we put the gusset in, we'll put it on the alignment table and make sure that all this is exactly where it needs to be before the gusset goes in, because once the gusset's in, it's not moving. Now 
We're back at Bridget. Got myself set up in here, all at the right angles. Bit of a solid, sketchy setup on the go. Clamps and bars and all kinds of weirdness. I just need to get myself zeroed in now, so I'm going to touch off this edge because the distance for the cut is set from here out. And then I need to find the centre of this hole because the distance is set from the centre to there, so I'm going to touch off the edge here and work out some mats to get the centre. <laughs> So, we, so what I did was add the diameter of the tool, the diameter of the tube together, divide that in two, which then gives me the centre point of that tube, 25.4. Then we need 12.5mm away from that edge, and currently 4mm. Big. Hopefully this setup is solid enough. Let's see. Could do with being more solid really. I don't really like that. It's vibrating quite a bit. I might see if I can stick something up here, clamp it at the front. Things a bit easier there for myself by moving this out of the way, but she's out. Next one in. <coughs> there we go, kids. Two swing arms with chainstay clearance cutouts. As I live and breathe. Would you believe it? Hey? Eh? Right, that's enough joking around for now. We've got tons to do and we've run out of time. Next up is holes for brake mounts. Got a little fixture for that. Get a little uh, cutting tool and a bar like that through there. Spin her up with the drill, cut hole in the seat stay. Now these two orifices that we have just made, that one and this one, need a damn good deburring with a file. So the rear brake mount consists of a bit of 10mm tube around about 1mm wall thickness and this little boss, threaded boss that goes on the top. 
can see that there, a the little brake fixture. We'll get to know more about that in a minute. And then the old post mount fits in that little cutout that we've got there. And then meets the chains there at the bottom. So we've just got to fettle with the bottom of the tube there so that it has a nice fit. Do that with hand tools, files, Dremel, and a bit of back and forth. The old braking mount is tacked in now. Need to make a cover for this bit and for this bit. I'm gonna get all this lot tacked in and welded in before taking the rear axle out of here and doing that one.
So we are back on the alignment table because the swing arms are ready to accept the gussets. So I just want to make sure that everything is where it should be before we put the gussets in because it is definitely not going to move once the gusset is in. So this is the drive side main pivot and working out my maths that needs to be 106.25 millimeters off of the surface plate. And I'm reading 106 millimeters. You can come check if you want. You want to check? Uh, 106 millimeters. It's pretty darn good. And then at the top we want 157.75. I've got this one up on there, slider in, it is pretty much touching. Touching there, and we're getting 157, 157.5-ish, so yeah, pretty darn close too. This drive side rocker link wants to be 91.25 millimeters. The gusset is going to need a bit of fettling though. We've got it sitting in pretty sweet at the top there. But it's not sitting in sweet down the bottom here. Quite clearly, it's got to come up, sit up in, on this tube here. So we've got to take a little bit off the top. The old vinegar worked a treat, removing the scale from this. Welded up quite nicely. Had to do a lot of welding to bring this thing back to life. May as well have just had it made in all separate bits. Oh well. But modifying this bit. Remember these little nubbins? They're attached to the top of the gussets. Well, they go in here yeah, like so. Obviously, I'm not doing a great job of holding it right now. Yeah, they go in there. They're a right tricky bastard.
see, you can see a bit of discoloration there. This is the side that's been back purged. Where on the other side? You can see some discoloration, but there's nowhere near any sort of scale or burn that you would see if it hadn't been back purged. If it hadn't been back purged, you would see more like what we're seeing there on the inside of that boss. And you know, they're kind of flaked up still. It just sucks to weld over that. It just doesn't really work. So if you can avoid it, it makes things way better. There we are kids, two swing arms, fully welded up. Now we've got to do the alignment checks. I've already done this one then, so it's just this one to do. Um, main pivot hasn't moved, because we haven't done any welding on that to cause that to close up. But this one has closed up a bit, so you can see that doesn't fit in there anymore. It's only about half a millimetre though, and I can just kind of squeeze that in, so it's not too bad, it hasn't moved a lot. And then the rear axle will have closed up because of the welds that we do on here and here. It causes the back end to squeeze in. See so that is not going to fit in. But we squeeze it in and then check the alignment. And then based on what it tells us, it tells us which one of these we need to pull out. So I'll just bottle this up and then go over to the surface plate. So for this main pivot here, we are looking for 106.25 off of the surface table. 106, pretty much bang on. And then over here, we want 91.25. A bit low, so 89.5, a bit there. Top on the rock with it should be 158, just above 157. So it's a bit low on the rockers, and a tiny bit low on the main pivot. But not too bad. The main pivot is pretty much bang on. The rockers are slightly low. So this situation that we've got here is slightly troubling. Whereas going to be a bit more difficult where this is the main pivot is pretty much bang on but the rockers are slightly off um, <clears throat> gonna have to just go steady on it make sure that it doesn't get too out of control but yeah as we said these were too low slightly too low so in order to bring it up the swing arm needs to come up and as the swing arm comes up this dropout is going to need to go down. So we're going to try and squeeze this stay out a bit and then check it again. So I've got the swing arm clamped in the vise like that and then just with my hand I'll pull this out a little bit till the axle will go in. Swing arms are done now then. I was happy with the alignment. We've taken off all the sharp edges where cracks might form from. Just blended everything all in super nice. It's all done apart from cable guides and there's a little bit of a weld on the end of the chain stays where it needs to drop out there. That I leave for a uh, breather hole like expansion, gas expansion. Yeah, they're done for now. So we can move on to the front drying angles. As I've said a couple of times in this video, I'm running out of time to get Lynn's frame finished. 
ready for his deadline. There's also a few other things that I've got on the go in order to bring money in. So I've got to do those. My bike's not uh, time sensitive. I've only got to get out of Schladming in sort of August time. So, you know, I can put mine to the side for now, crack on with that other stuff and maybe pick it up at some other point in the future. But yeah, next video, we're going to be cracking on with the front triangle. There's a few things I need to get ready for it. Head tube needs some work. Seat tube needs some bending. A few other odds and ends here and there. But yeah, see you next week. Or maybe two, maybe three. Who knows? But what we do know is keep us sideways.